I wanted to see how they do rock and roll in Ukraine. To do this, I've decided to compose a song with a rather infamous local band, Perkalaba. But to understand Ukrainian music, I had to first understand Ukrainians. Why Ukraine? Because of its unknown beauty and my roots. The country's history is riddled with controversy and struggle. Gaining freedom from the Soviet Union in 1991 was unexpected and left the country in kind of a limbo. 30% of the country still speaks Russian. Ukraine, torn between two fronts, the West, who hold European and Western values, and the East, who continue to support Soviet rule. And for the next week, tossed somewhere in the middle of all of it, is me. I'm Ryan Pasco. I love to travel, to meet people, and have a good time. That's why I've decided to record a rock album in 12 countries around the world. Crazy? Maybe. My first trip has just started and it's already rock and roll. Literally. I like the Wild West out here. Imagine roller coaster with brakes in the track. It's bad, so it certainly makes what should be, you know, maybe an hour and a half trip, about two and a half hours. And the drivers, too, um, I guess it's just maybe just a different mentality. Kind of like Battle Royale on the road to Lviv. Lviv, 800,000 people, seventh largest city in all of Ukraine, founded in the 13th century. Beautiful and historical. Before I went to see the band Perkalaba and start composing a song, I decided to look for some inspiration in the city. I happened upon a very interesting place. Slava Ukraine! Praise to the heroes! I come in peace! Komunisto! No, no communist! Come in! I'm here five minutes and I already have a gun pointed at my face. Great! A rather shocking greeting for a restaurant. The only good Russian is a dead Russian. You're okay. Come with us. <laughs> where are you from? I'm from uh, New York. <laughs> is it where the Statue of Liberty stands? Yeah, 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 it's still there too. Look people, a living American in Lviv. Western Ukrainians do in fact like Americans. Kriivka is one of the most popular restaurants in Ukraine where you can get a beer for a buck fifty and fill your belly with delicious local delicacies. Tell me a little bit about what we just saw happening here with the soldiers running around and the guns. The Ukrainian soldiers coming and they are um, searching for Russian people and ask the special Ukrainian uh, words. Like things that only they would understand that yes, Russians yes. might not. They've taken a difficult history and turned it into a game of sorts. Of course, now I wanted to play. Shooting ex-Soviet leaders sounded like a lot of fun to me. I chose this guy. Looks a little familiar, huh? We found a table with some, some Russians at it, and we thought it'd be interesting to see what, their opinion on the little games that they play here, and obviously there's no political tension. He doesn't believe me. <laughs> Ryan, can you say something in English? What's up, brother? How you doing, man? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he understands me. <laughs> they were looking at me as if I were on display in a museum, rather than just a guy in a bar. Here comes the politics. Russia and the U.S. have always fought. This is all politics, and we are only puppets. Unfortunately, the people end up fighting the people for usually one or two people at the very top. So I do agree with you on that. We agreed on this, but seeing eye to eye, stopped there. I'm sure the U.S. is guilty, and it will try to defeat Russia every time. Everywhere the U.S. goes, there is chaos. Syria, Yugoslavia, everywhere. Such a lovely take on things. I think the U.S. will finally fail. I wonder if all Russians feel the same way. Getting a better look at the city, I was pleasantly surprised to see that it looked so European and normal compared to what I'd heard. Life here isn't always easy with an average monthly salary of just $400. To be prepared to write a song with Ukrainians, I needed a serious talk about the current situation. That's why I was meeting with Tanya, an ambitious young Ukrainian activist. We were meeting under the statue of the controversial nationalist Stefan Bandera. 
What does a typical day uh, look like for you? Every morning there are soldiers calling. For example, I help them to get a helmet or a bulletproof vest. Do you think that there's problems between Eastern and Western Ukrainians in terms of mentality? Or Western Ukrainians want to you know, join the European Union on the east side? Or they want to stay under Russia's rule? Yes, there is a difference. East Ukraine suffered the most under Stalin. Ten million people died in the East. Russians moved in and settled down. They do not identify with Ukraine. Do you have any Russian friends? I have some Russian friends and fortunately they are aware of what Russia is doing here. And that makes me very happy. This was very interesting, but I didn't want the song to be too sad. So, change the tune to something a bit more playful. So anyway, to, to get off of the, the sad topic, what's the best place to get a beer? I found myself now at the Levivskia Brewery. Now we're talking. We are going to visit our brewery museum. When do we get to taste some beer? The brewery is 300 years old and produces some of the most popular beers in Ukraine, and it's open to the public. The brewmasters perform water analysis. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Sample, please. 42 tanks here. That's a that's, lot of that's, beer. Yes. That's a lot of beer. I thought it was finally time to go taste okay. some brew. Okay, we go back oh, to back the brewing yep. department. Not quite yet. The brewery produces thousands of bottles a day, and I just needed a few. All right, we've been put into this competition who can drink more in 15 seconds. I have a real sneaking suspicion that Andrew's gonna be better at this than I am. You ready to go? We're going. Let's go. Stop. Good, he swim. We, we don't drink beer, we drink vodka. Ah. Oh, he just couldn't accept the loss. In the morning, I was meeting with the band, so I decided to head back to the hotel early, but I ran into these two noble characters. Say hi, guys. Of course, just to explore their culture further. Do you know what a common snack with beer is in Ukraine? I've tried the cheese. This is goat cheese. Kind of like what we have in the States, like string cheese. But then, you got this stuff. Take a look. Looks like dried, smoked fish to me. I'm not sure how to eat it, so I'm going to need your guys' help here. Okay, I'm, okay, okay. You bite, you pull the head off. That's good. I, was, I really didn't want to eat the head of this. Thing. Look carefully. I was really, really hoping there was like a knife and a fork involved in this process, but there, there's not. Okay. Oh, it's so good. It's good. Don't you like this fish? Everything seemed to be going fine until... Do you guys know who Putin. 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 Putin crazy. We don't talk about Putin anymore. No, we're not talking no, about Putin, Putin anymore. Putin, Putin, come here. Hi there. What's up? Putin. Putin, come, come here. here. Come here. The Western Ukrainians have very sensitive feelings about Russia. See what that is? That is a bottle opener. Fuck you for, uh, for no, no time, you know? That was Perkalaba's manager. He was pretty ticked off because we were really late and already pressed for time to write this song. Hello. Oh. Hey, welcome we to owe you friend. a huge apology for the, uh, we had a little bit of a fiasco this morning. Uh, out of our entire crew, nobody remembered to change the time. <laughs> Watch this, we're an hour behind. first scene when you come to another country. Yes. In good Ukrainian fashion, I thought I'd offer a few drinks on me to make up for our tardiness. I think uh, we'll maybe drink a few beers or some vodka. I have an anti-alcohol implant, so I won't drink anymore. So you, you'll drink for him? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> In a country with over 40 million people, I make this offer to Vasilya, the one recovering alcoholic. Well done. This is the infamous Perkalaba, with whom I was to spend the next week writing a song. Their music is a mix of rock and traditional mountain man, or chutzul, style. We're on our way, and now entering what looked like another world. We'd finally made it to the Ukrainian chutzul countryside, 300 kilometers south of Lviv. This was a place where you could hide away from the rest of the world on just $20 a day, including homemade meals. 
away from cell phones and computers, and it was amazing. I don't think Ukraine gets any credit for being such a beautiful country. Unfortunately, it's one of those countries you're kind of stigmatized. It's really beautiful, like all the stuff that you've done inside, and, and I think you do very well in the States as an interior designer. I give new life to things here that other people just wouldn't use anymore. What kind of guests do you get here? My guests are mostly creative people who come here to explore our Hutsul culture. So you would say this place inspires people in an artistic way? My guests get inspired here. After they go home, they are full of new ideas. We really thank you for having us and uh, really looking forward to spending some time together. I think I was finally in the right place to write the song. She'd asked me if I wanted some tea, and I said, absolutely. She leaves the kitchen, and she starts walking outside. She doesn't use tea bags. She uses everything from her garden. It was made from mint, lavender, black currant, blackberries, melissa, and John's wort. Um, I actually wish you could smell it. Um, it just smells like the most natural tea you've ever smelled. This is borscht. Potatoes and stuffed cabbage. And don't forget the brinza. Sheep cheese. It's kind of like Parmesan, a little bit, a little more snap to it. Really good. Everything had such a fresh and original flavor. The borscht, a traditional Ukrainian soup, red in color, is made mostly from beets. Add to that the flavor of cabbage and potatoes. Delicious. And don't forget about the Ukrainian moonshine, or samagon, <laughs> which played an important role in the rest of our day. Although my first official jam with Perkalava and contact with the locals wasn't the best indicator of how the song was going to turn out. It was actually complete insanity. Calm down, God is watching you. And the manager also didn't quite look up to the task. Did you know that blackberries are very common as a chaser in Ukraine? Can you drink healthy? Of course you can. Slowly, I was drinking in the culture along with other things. My next test was waiting for me. In short, Alex decided that we should do a serious rehearsal, of course combined with a little party for which we needed a lamb. Let's go to find a lamb. And this is gonna be a living lamb. Yeah. You guys definitely don't fuck around, yes. do you? I have no idea what kind of car it is, what kind of van, but I would say it's at least 50 years old. Oh, I can do this, yeah. Alec, what kind of car is this? Is this a Ukrainian car? Russian. Russian car. Russian car, yeah. Oh. Is it safe? <laughs> The door isn't closing. I'm not sure if I switched into second or fourth gear. <laughs> I gotta hold the door closed with my left hand <laughs> and just hope we make it there alive. All right, I actually noticed the flags that we got here. If you can see, one is the Ukrainian flag with the blue and yellow, and the other one is the European Union flag. <clears throat> so it's pretty obvious that they are not separatists and they are pro-West, let's say. All right, here is the gas station that we're going to. This van was a UAZ 452, commonly called a loaf of bread. The first model was released in 1965 in the Soviet Union, and it's still used to this day. The landscape was almost similar to a Swiss mountainside, but slightly more rugged. About half hour, 45 minutes up a really, really bumpy road, but the effect is pretty pristine, really nice farm. And we're going to get the lamb now, and I'm not exactly 100% sure how I feel about it. Um, I don't like to generally get to know my food before I eat it, but you know, it's kind of the way they do things here. So I'm just kind of looking at it like that. It's kind of like going to the supermarket. So Alec is here. And Alec is going to help us negotiate a price for the lamb. Hello, we came to buy a lamb. Would you sell it for $30? No, because it's not so easy to raise. And $32? 
So will forty dollars be all right? Okay. 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 Fair enough. Mebara, do what else? This lamb doesn't have a name, does it? Look at this. This is so sad. They all get up like they're coming over, like we're coming over to like throw them a party or something. Oh no, actually they're smart. They know where they're going. Choose lamb. Me? Okay, I do eat meat. What? What tastes better, young lamb, old lamb? Not old, of not course. Old? Not nine months. Oh, well, let's go. Okay. Let's... This is gonna happen whether I like it or not. So let's just let's just do it. See, uh, what's the best choice for lamb? How do you, how do you make your decision? Mulligish. Does color make a difference? I was trying to hold my own, but it didn't work. The white one is yours. What I'm trying to do is remove myself from the things that I'm used to, is not killing my own food. But for them here, it's very normal. So I'm just kind of going with the flow, and you know, we'll enjoy some good lamb meat later. I do feel bad for it, though. Say bye, her. I just like to thank this little lamb. <laughs> Куда, ебать? Летять голочкой, отрелядочкой. I'm like a Buddhist. I eat food which I don't see before that alive. I would prefer also not to watch it, but... This wasn't going to be easy, and I could see that Alec wasn't going to be any help. This is true situation. Uh, this is not evil situation, oh, you know. Jesus. Yeah. For you, it will be life experience. I think so. okay. maybe. If I was a religious Sorry. man, I'd say a prayer. But Sorry. they do this to survive, and I think that anybody who eats meat should see how and where it comes from. He just cut the balls off. too much for me. After the goat experience, they invited us to a small sit-down meal in honor of our presence. I imagine they don't have many guests here. Samogon. <laughs> 45 grades, yeah. It's normal, so you can just have a quick drink. <laughs> yeah, it's light. <laughs> and I bought one liter of this light liquor for two dollars, just to be polite. We were about to make lamb stew. Time to buy the ingredients the Ukrainian way. What we're doing now is we're getting some materials and some vegetables and stuff from this little stand. Misha. He holds uh, 25 mm -hmm. because he says that you are American, you are a capitalist, and you pay much. Not clean, old, and he wants 25. I think too much. Three dollars for these, yes? Yeah. No, three dollars for all. Oh, the fight doesn't break out. <laughs> it wasn't easy to find him. Сколько маешь копеек? Маешь, я думаю, только... I have some money. Some money. Some money. Some money. Some money. He wants 45. So let's just give him 50 and call it a okay, okay, give him 4 dollars. Thanks. Remember, I am on your side. He is an American capitalist. You owe me. We decided to prepare the goat in a more touristic location, which I'm not a huge fan of, but this place was nice. Tell, tell us a little bit about this place. How long have you been here for? What type of people come? This is a very beautiful place in the Carpathian Mountains. The village is Verkni Aseniv. Real Ukrainian Hutsuls live here. May I explain something about Bandera? Because Russians call us Banderats. What does Bandera mean? These were our ancestors who fought for freedom, and it is they who were the so-called Banderites. The subject of this guy has just popped up again. Do you remember the statue staring over our shoulder at my meeting with Tanya? Stefan Bandera is a Ukrainian politician with strong nationalistic views, which many consider to be fascist. The Russians hate him, and some Ukrainians worship him. Nothing here is black and white. 
How many buildings are here and how much do they cost to rent? One bed with breakfast, $20. For one day, and that includes breakfast. That's not bad. High five. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> While the lamb stew was being prepared, we thought it'd be a good time to get started on our first practice of this American Ukrainian song. You guys ready to go? Yo. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Here we go. I have some concerns. Uh -huh. It has nothing to do with the guys. Writing a song takes time, and if you rush it, that's when there's problems. Mm -hmm. When we jammed, everything was awesome. It was really good. It sounded awesome. Because we're all musicians, you know, we, we all play. But the second we started trying to work on this song, it just kind of became chaotic. And I'm just slightly concerned that we might be trying to bite off more than we can chew, so to speak. I think it's going to be difficult to say the least. Tomorrow from the morning, we begin to start privately, think how to do this song. Mm -hmm. Try and make in text. Put it all the pieces yes, together. Yes. No song, no song. But let's, let's do try. all our efforts. Let's try. do our best to At do it. Yes. Today is a party. Deal. <laughs> My concerns were put to ease by his Ukrainian mentality. Now, it's time to party. And now, a funny spin on the local politics. Sasha, I've been looking at your t-shirt all day. Tell me what this says. This is how we express our love to the president of Russia and his aggressive politics. So basically it says, fuck Putin. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of the ingredients for the stew. Potatoes, carrots, zucchini, red peppers. Are we close? Let's taste. So this is uh, pure meat. It's really, really, really good. You can also add a little cilantro. It's so good. The lamb and the atmosphere were great, and the party lasted till the early dawn. Anybody who needs to get away from it all for a while, I recommend the Carpathian Mountains too. Every day was full of music, laughter, and happiness, almost like a hippie compound. But one thing was in the back of my mind. We still didn't have our American-Ukrainian song yet, which we wanted to play at a huge festival. Too much partying, I guess. Maybe I needed more inspiration. Time to experience the real culture. I was going to meet two very traditional characters which might help me understand Ukraine. First, a woman armed with a rather unorthodox skill set, a Hutsul witch doctor. I was scared. But apparently for this region, it's completely normal. Slava Isusu Christo. It's not often I see guests here. You surprised me. Anyway, come in. Maria was a traditional Hutsul faith healer and lived a lifestyle not uncommon to others in the Hutsul region of Ukraine. This was a log cabin, no electricity, a return to almost ancient ways. You might compare this to an Amish lifestyle. Were you baptized? Um, I was baptized, um, but somewhere decided to take a different spiritual path. It's bad, very bad. Lovely start. My problem is smoking too many cigarettes. 17 years. We will pray to God to help you give up smoking. I wouldn't stop, I would just maybe keep going. This is cool. Lay down. I'm very curious what's going to happen here. This is peculiar. I'm not, not sure what to make of this. We must pray. Covering me with a mat was meant to calm my soul. I keep having this weird sensation that my feet are on fire, but I think that's just mind over matter. <laughs> I know it's burning by my feet somewhere. <laughs> 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 
The hand movements on my face and on the ground symbolize the crucifix. Evil be gone. Earthy smell. Flavor, almost like dirt. It's sad, Dink. Spitting meant ridding my body of its demons. That was interesting. And at the end of this ceremony, she burned my shirt. And go away. Before leaving, I asked her for one more thing. Uh, we have very few days to prepare the song, so I was thinking maybe you could give me some good vibes for it. She came back with a strange looking device. This was a drimba more commonly known in the West as a mouth harp. Next, I was given candles to light. Maybe this is like a patience test or something. Because... <laughs> I swear to God, I have no idea. Hmm, I probably shouldn't say that in here. Yes, you succeeded. These glowing candles mean your mind will be aware. Something I was a little bit unprepared for was the religion was heavily based in the, in the process, which for me was a little bit difficult because I don't practice any kind of Christianity. But I am an open person, and uh, I don't know, maybe something will come of it. Maybe her magic helped, and I'll finally write this song together with this unusual band. To help me in the process even more, I was sent to meet yet another interesting character, known here as the local Leonardo da Vinci. I certainly wasn't going to show up empty-handed. Hi, can we have some vodka and maybe some kielbasa? Yeah, kielbasa. Yeah? In the shop, one thing in particular drew my attention. Vodka, bread, and sausage. It will be seven dollars. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's like an abacus, and this is what most of the stores here that we've seen that they're using to count what we buy. Sort of primitive, but kind of cool and old-fashioned at the same time. The road was long and bumpy and uphill the whole way. I was going to meet Mihaiwo, a traditional Hutsul instrument maker. Hello. Slava Jesus Christo. Slava Jesus Christo. I brought for you uh, some some gifts, some vodka. That did the trick. Yeah, okay. Nice. Thank yeah. you. Literally everything inside was handmade. Signs of religion everywhere. Wood burning stove in the middle and portraits of Mihaiwo with his instruments on the walls. All of the instruments that you make, do you know also how to play them? No, I can play all Hutzel instruments. I play this at parties. This is a very melodic one. Talenka. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And I've just been given some fresh well water. They just have the sound of, of the mountains here, like a hutsul sound. This one is used at funerals. Every instrument had its specific use. It has that kind of deep, kind of sad sound to it. Ah, I haven't showed you the trimbita. Damn it! Duda! 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 Shkira koza. It's made from goat skin. I did it myself. Okay. It looks similar to a, a, a bagpipe. Tak, tak. Yes. I was completely taken away by this guy. This resembled a Scottish bagpipe but with a Ukrainian twist. 
The last instrument for me was the most impressive. This lira was widely used by musicians with limited mobility. It looked like something from a fairy tale. It's a, it's a kind of sound I've never heard before. Now I had to see how he made these things. There's actually tools in here that I've never even seen before. And I was a carpenter for almost 10 years. Nobody makes such tools here anymore. This one I did myself too. Yeah? Top. Makes, makes his own axes too, look at this. It's really incredible. If he needs a specific tool that he doesn't have that's going to make his job yeah. easier, he makes the tool himself. This is the kind of mentality that I don't think Westerners have so much. I climb the birch and I take the bark off. Look, I wrap the trebito with this. And he makes his own laminate. If we need something like this in the States, we go to Home Depot. The head of the Ukrainian government is the president. The executive power is in the hands of the government officials headed by the prime minister. The legislative power lies within the chairman of parliament and this guy couldn't care less. I don't have TV, but I know there are bad things happening around. So what is it like here in the winter? It's gotta be pretty hard. Do you, do you have a car or do you, do you walk everywhere? We have everything here. We don't need shops. My wife bakes bread. I got an engine and I built a one-cylinder car. And if it breaks down, I can fix it myself. Mm -hmm. Can we see your tractor? Yeah, come on. We'll go for a short drive. <laughs> You'd mentioned before that he works with steel, and he wasn't lying. This is um, <laughs> pretty incredible. This part right here looks like it was hand-pounded, and I imagine the man made it himself. Seats from something. Now you see why he's referred to as a Hutzul da Vinci. Get this baby fired up. Okay. If the world simply disappeared around the borders of this village, they wouldn't even notice, and life would just go on. So the thing, it doesn't go very fast, but it gets the job done, I'll tell you what. <laughs> so are you going to sell it to me? <laughs> Take it back to New York. I don't think it would pass inspection, though. You know what? I think my experiences here helped. The Carpathian Mountains were the second largest mountain range in Europe and were inspiring to say the least. This song will be nice and peaceful because at last I felt right at home despite being almost seven and a half thousand kilometers away from New York. I started to feel a connection with these guys. This was the last moment to move on with our song because the festival was just a few days ahead. Roman, actually your first question, what do you have on your head? That Gutsulan cat. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what are you drinking over there? Tea uh, with uh, Miata. What about you, Pete? Beer. Beer. Okay, standard. <laughs> and today's plan is to start on the text. On a happy note, it was the, uh, the first morning without Samagon. You'd never believe what we decided to write the song about. The song must be like a dialogue between an American and a Ukrainian. Is it good? That's exactly what I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, the only important thing now to think about is an actual topic. I propose uh, to make uh, with some bit of humor without America, Ukraine, the friends. No. The main topic is being a guy from States who come to Gusul country. Mm -hmm. After all, all roads lead to Rome. We could write the song about Samogon. Great. Maybe. Maybe. I have an idea that could tie the two things in together. This topic stirred the pot for all of us, even Vasily. A potion for the mind. Elixir. Ah, elixir for the mind. I got it. 
Oh yeah, you drink and you feel inspired. My friends, let the Carpathian muse overwhelm you. Drink, drink some moonshine. <laughs> It wasn't the easiest thing in the world to get the ball rolling on this song, but finally I was able to see the artistry that lie within this crazy group of guys. One in particular, a Hutzel native, stood out amongst them all. Peter was a true artist. Pete, come here. Play that song you wrote when you were 22. Ah, uh, okay. Play that. <laughs> you guys gotta hear this, really. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> now, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a musician, if you're not a musician, if you like music, if you don't like music. That's talent. Second time he's played that for me. It gives me chills every single time. We finally wrote the song's structure down on paper. For me, it may as well have been Chinese because it was in Cyrillic. We finished the song in two days. I hit the road to Lviv to play the song in front of 40,000 people. I know you want to hear it now, but you have to wait a while. On the way there, we stopped to meet a friend of the band who had a very interesting device. And this is our friend Oleg. Hi. Hello. Tell us a little bit about your contraption here. This is a still. You can produce good quality whiskey. How much did it cost you to build it? It's everything handmade. Wow. Cost approximately one and a half thousand dollars. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh. What do you do to start a batch? Like, what's the first steps? The first step is to make some mash. It has water, sugar, and yeast. The yeast eats the sugar and produces 12% alcohol. First, I put 22 liters here. And that's where the separation process takes place. Spiritus sits down here and drips out this tube here. Yes, yeah. spiritus have uh, mm -hmm. 96%. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's like 96%. Uh, yes, this yes. This is 50? Uh, 50. Still good stuff yeah. though. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You can really see his passion for this. It turned out Oleg doesn't produce moonshine to sell, just for himself and his friends, like many other people in this country. The alcohol in Ukraine isn't always of the highest quality, but his product guarantees a minimum hangover, apparently. Also, he said you can smear it on your body to help with arthritis and to cure the common cold. This is a popular method in Ukraine. Slowly, we moved from theoretical uses to a more practical application. Yeah. Cool. Can we try some? Yes, All of right. course. <laughs> um, this is product. It's um, a little yellow because it um, uh, stay in... Um, Oak barrel. Yeah, Oak yeah. barrel. Um, if it was in longer, it would be darker. Yeah. Like whiskey. Yeah, you're like, whiskey. like whiskey, yeah. yeah. You have to do this, you may smell oak. And you get to wash your but hands at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Bottoms up. <laughs> it's strong. Ooh. Ooh. That's good. That is good. It tastes like a very high quality whiskey. You know what? I think I was finally ready for Zexit Fest. Fest is a three-day, huge festival with popular Ukrainian and foreign bands playing on three stages, and we were one of them. We've just driven through Tenth City, driving in to get our accreditation passes now, and I am stoked. My blood is pumping. This is the stuff I live for. What does it mean to be Ukrainian? For me, even when life kicks you in the ass, gives you a bad hand, rise above, and make the best of what you have. It's not even easy for these young people to leave their country. Festivals like this, 
and music in general are perhaps a stepping stone towards peace. Be passionate, be proud, and remember where you come from. Me and my crew, we've spent the last week in your beautiful country, and we wrote this song. A journey on the road, my friends, I can't believe my eyes. There's something in the air up here, it makes me feel alive. Понесемось аж за хмари, по небесній ко.